And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight our special guest is Ken Ring. Ken has a different way of predicting weather, a natural way based on the cycles of the moon. Planning a wedding or future event for 2009 or 2010 and you're worried about the weather? Just ask Ken at predictweather.com. We welcome Ken Ring as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Ken Ring, welcome once again to The Beat Goes On. Thanks very nice to be here. We're going to talk about the weather for this winter. And mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing that people talk about more in New Zealand than the weather is there. And you've made a That's living right. out of it, haven't you? A wonderful living. That's right. Look, and everything we do involves the weather. There's yeah. no industry that doesn't depend on it somehow. So for our viewers out there, Ken is, has a website called predictweather.com and everything you wanted to know about weather is on there, isn't there? So <laughs> the winter. Mm -hmm. I have heard you mention, and you did mention the last time, that the winter for 2009 was going to be a boomer. Mm -hmm. Now, but if, that if, doesn't if, mean we have to buy more electric blankets. Uh, yep, and more firewood because it's going to be longer. It's going to go, uh, for instance, they're going to be skiing, I think, uh, as far uh, into the year as the second week in January of next year. So that's how long the ski season will go, which is kind of a repeat of what happened 1991, 92, and before that, 71. So uh, that's how long the winter's going to be. It's going to be a, a wet and cold spring, so that snow is going to stay there. Uh, we're going to get into these colder temperatures about April the 18th. Uh, you'll see first snows, you know, good snow on Rapehu then, uh, and then you know we'll be into it. So, but it's not going to be that wet until August, August September. That's when the most rain, precipitation, actual snow is going to fall in big quantities. Uh, before then, it's going to be quite dry, but it's going to be cold, and so it's a question of, you know, not so much colder, more, um, more firewood, more jerseys needed. That's the, the way it's going to look. For our viewers who uh, may not know. Uh, what Ken does, really you're talking about there is a cycle in the weather, a yes, cycle. Certainly. It's always there. It's been there since the um, beginning of time. The weather that we see on the normal channels, they have, they'll have they only predict one or two days in front of themselves. Now, well, they're, they're telling you what's happening now, yes. you know, and, and they don't tell you a whole lot of stuff, which is, for example, that the weather balloons float higher on the new moon and full moon days, indicating this king tide in the air as well. You know, so they don't want to go the way of saying there's cycles because there's no money in it for them. You know, there's no looking at TV, seeing the advertisers, going the 0900 numbers. You know, if everybody could just look up and see the moon and, you know, get their reading, um, you know, they would wipe the, um, the profit base away from science. So they're not going to go there. But what you can do, you can actually go one year in advance, one whole year in advance. Well, so more if I want to. Even more if you wanted to, because there is a cycle that is constantly repeating. Mm -hmm. So Ken Ring's Predict Weather for 2009, you bring one of these out every year, mm -hmm. and uh, well, well, you're operating, operating basically one year in advance, which is wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. So somebody that's having a wedding or a special day just has to have a look at this book, and they've got a very good idea. So this cycle, let's go into detail, as I said before. The Earth is surrounded by this huge uh, envelope of air. And even though we can't hit it or touch it, it actually is quite a, uh, a massive and a very heavy substance, isn't it? When you That's right. The, the weight of the air is 5,000 million million tons. Wow. So it's pretty heavy. You know, it's equivalent to 33 feet of water sitting on your head in, in weight anywhere you stand on the planet. And uh, people don't realise that it does have that kind of weight. Wow. As the moon goes around the Earth, it actually drags this huge weight that you've just described. It grabs it, doesn't it? Well, there's a bulge in the, the air, bulge. same as there's a bulge in the water. There's also a bulge in the ground, which people don't realise until yeah. they sort of look up land tides. The whole ground lifts up eight inches a day and drops again as the moon comes over. You've got nothing to compare it to, so it's hard to see it. What, is, what does the moon do to this air to cause weather? 
Well, because it creates a tide and it's a, it, it changes the height of the air at any one time depending on where the moon is. So if the air is higher or lower, it lets in either the heat from the sun, more or less, or the cold from space in the night time, more or less. So for example, on a full moon day, the moon hasn't risen yet and if, say, it's the summer time, uh, the sun can beat down uh, much more strongly because it can come closer to the ground without that air in the way uh, and it's the hottest time in the summer is over a full moon time. January the 9th to the 11th, that was when the temperatures got over 40, uh, in, you know, uh, nearly that in Christchurch and uh, that in Sydney. And, uh, and that was the time, over the full moon time. You know, same in February, over that full moon time. So that's how it operates kind of in the summertime. When, now when the moon rises, um, which is at the uh, sunset if it's the full moon, then it pushes away because it brings the air up too and it pushes away the colder evening stuff that's trying to get down because colder air is heavier. And so it, and because of that it clears the sky because that's that colder air that creates the clouds. Uh, the clouds are everywhere really but you can't see them unless they come into view when they're condensed by a bit of cold up there, you know, the, um, what, I'm, what I'm saying is the water vapours everywhere. Now Ken, this sounds so common sense as you're talking to me about it and um, it makes you wonder why do we have to go to all these expensive satellites and um, what's been the prejudice against uh, the way you're doing it? Well you're talking about job protection, you know, I mean, uh, and uh, preserving careers, I mean, you know, this is the way science has gone. You know, the science runs on research funding, getting money from governments. It's not orthodox, is it? No, but if you ask any farmer uh, if the if the moon, you know, and the, and the sun and uh, the uh, the tides have a kind of a weather hookup, you know, they'll pretty well all tell you that it does if they've been on the land for long enough. You know, they'll t they come up to me after talks that I give and they say, you know, everybody knows the moon creates the weather. You know, we we know where we are in our estuary. You know, when it's a high tide, the rain comes and whatever if it wasn't coming before. So they, they still farm like that. Mm. Um, and, it's, and it's because they're out there for a cycle. Now, a cycle to the moon is between 18 and 20 years. These guys have been out there that long. They've got their fathers working alongside them. The people in the city have only been working at their jobs for like five or six years. Then they move on. And so they don't see a cycle. Mm. Uh, and so they should go out there, ask the farmers, you know, that's what I do. I love talking to farmers, I get a lot of stuff, you know, I learn a lot of stuff. See, for, uh, but you'll see it in news reports every so often, oh, this is the worst in 20 years, you know, like uh, Mount Hutt last year had the most snow in 20 years. You know, this was a snippet in the paper. Uh, Marlborough had the, uh, the mildest spring in 20 years. Uh, Takaka had the worst flooding in 20 years. And, um, you know, uh, February in Melbourne was the driest February in 20 years just gone. So every now and then you say, well, it's not 20, it's actually closer to 19, but they haven't got their handles on this moon cycle, uh, but that's the last time it came around. And if they, they've got all the data, they just have to go back into their own records, except that the moon has some role to play, just as the tides do, you know, as, as the moon does in the tides, I mean, and they'll see that the weather repeats as well. And that's really all I'm putting into my almanacs. I'm going back and finding what the weather was back then, and not only one cycle, several cycles, uh, if I can get the, the, the data. So every 19 it years, it, 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 it completes the, the process yeah. over and over again. The people can test this for themselves. Yeah. If they've got an event coming up, go to the library and look up exactly 19 years, like day for day, uh, and so like it would be 1990 and whatever the day is today, mm -hmm. you know, the 2nd of April, uh, and which is when we're doing this, and they'll see the weather map is pretty well the same as what's in this morning's paper. Gosh, that's 19 years, that's all exactly, it takes. Yeah.